Franz Boas was born into a liberal intellectual family in Minden, Germany in 1858. Raised in a climate of free thinking and progressive ideas, his early education was marked by a strong scientific inclination. He studied physics, geography and mathematics at the University of Heidelberg, followed by studies in natural history and geography at the University of Bonn. To deepen his understanding, he also pursued his doctorate in physics at the University of Kiel. Boas's interest in anthropology was sparked by a lecture by Theobald Fischer on geographical influences on culture. His intrigue deepened during his studies at university, where he began exploring the relationship between physical and cultural phenomena. This intellectual pursuit led him to embark on a journey to Baffin Island in 1883, marking the beginning of his anthropological career. In a time when theories of racial superiority were rampant, Boas emerged as a fierce challenger. He believed that the understanding of another culture was not through the lens of one's own culture, but through an objective study of the culture itself. His research on the Inuit people during his Baffin Island expedition further solidified this belief. This paradigm-shifting perspective has credited him with being the father of American anthropology, a title cemented by his persistent work in the field. The concept of cultural relativism, which became a cornerstone of Boas's work and thinking, revolves around the idea that a person's beliefs, values, and activities should be interpreted in the context of their own culture and not judged by the standards of another culture. Boas's belief in cultural relativism challenged prevailing notions of ethnocentrism, which often categorized cultures as primitive or advanced based on their differences from Western norms. He asserted that all cultures have equal value and should be appreciated for their unique contributions to human diversity and understanding. Boas applied these principles throughout his work, notably in his studies of the Inuit and the Kwakiutl tribes of British Columbia. Instead of dismissing their cultures as primitive, he closely examined their practices, social structures and belief systems from their own cultural perspectives. His studies revealed these societies as intricate and sophisticated, dismissing the notion of them being primitive. The respect and understanding he demonstrated for non-Western cultures was groundbreaking in the field. In addition, Boas introduced the four-field approach to anthropology, which included cultural anthropology, biological linguistic anthropology, and archaeology. The four-field approach advocated for a holistic view of human societies and cultures, recognizing that all aspects of society are interconnected and contribute to our understanding of humanity. For example, in his study of the Kwakiutl, Boas used both linguistic and cultural anthropology, documenting their languages and examining their potlatch ceremony. A complex social event centered on gift-giving, his work was integral in establishing the value and validity of this holistic approach. Boas was a firm believer in the importance of fieldwork and lived by this principle in his own research. For example, he spent considerable time in the Baffin Island, living among the Inuit people. He learned their language, participated in their hunting routines, observed their social structures, and documented their oral histories. This immersive approach, now considered a fundamental aspect of anthropological research, was groundbreaking in Boas's era. One of Boas's most significant contributions was his challenge to scientific racism. A notable example is his critique of the craniometric study, a popular research methodology of the time that claimed the size and shape of an individual's skull could mark their intelligence. Boas pointed out the method's fundamental flaws and argued that skull sizes could change within a single generation due to environmental factors. His arguments against the idea that racial groups possess inherent abilities or characteristics were met with both praise and criticism. While some contemporaries saw Boas's work as a turning point in anthropology and praised its forward-thinking nature, many others held on to their long-standing beliefs and rejected his ideas. Regardless, Boas's research heavily influenced the way anthropologists would approach their studies in the future shifting the focus from biological determinism to cultural and environmental factors. 
Franz Boas left a profound legacy that extends far beyond his own seminal work. He was a mentor and guide to a whole generation of anthropologists, playing a vital role in shaping their academic and intellectual journey. Among his most notable students were Margaret Mead, known for her work on cultural relativism, and Ruth Benedict, who studied under Boas at Columbia University and later became one of his most prominent successors. Both Mead and Benedict carried on his innovative ideas and methods, and their works, greatly influenced by Boas, have become classics in anthropological studies. They carried the torch lit by Boas, promoting his philosophy of cultural relativity and an empirically driven, fieldwork-based approach to anthropology. Boas's influence was not just limited to his students. He made a substantial contribution to the practice of salvage ethnography, a method aimed at documenting cultures that are on the verge of extinction. He dedicated himself to the task of recording the languages, folklore, and customs of indigenous peoples, especially those in North America. His meticulous efforts in this area have helped preserve cultural memory and safeguarded invaluable knowledge for future generations. As a writer, Boas's influence remains unparalleled. He penned numerous seminal publications, chief among them being The Mind of Primitive Man and Anthropology and Modern Life. These works have not just shaped the direction of anthropological thought, but they continue to be widely studied and referenced in contemporary scholarship. They serve as testimony to Boas's intellectual rigor and his innovative thinking. The lasting legacy of Franz Boas is multifaceted and profound. His contributions have been transformative for the field of anthropology, propagating a holistic, culturally relative and fieldwork-based approach. His staunch critique of scientific racism holds profound implications and has been instrumental in challenging harmful stereotypes and prejudices. And it's not just anthropology. His ideas continue to influence other social sciences too, mainly through his students. Without a shred of doubt, the field of anthropology as we understand and practice it today owes an immeasurable debt to the pioneering work of Franz Boas.